Welcome back to I'm Every Woman TV's Be My Valentine special. Our next guest is a fitness guru, owner of Fitness Solutions Plus. And he's here to talk to us about something that probably affects quite a few of us ladies. You know, when we're, we're eating right, we're watching the calories, we're counting them, we're exercising maybe even every day at the gym, and we're not seeing the results. We cannot shed those extra pounds. So I brought Igor in to talk about the hormone body fat connection. And there is one. Well, we'll, le we'll learn a little bit more about it and what you can do to have that figure you've always dreamed about. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Igor. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay. I'm very excited and, to be here. And I'm very excited to have you. And it's Igor Klibanov. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I'm channeling my inner Russian. Good. Okay, <laughs> so Igor, we, we want to get right into this because yes. we, we have only so much time. Um, explain to me the connection between the hormone and the fat in the mm -hmm. body. It's a very good question. We know intuitively that it exists. Let me ask you a question. Go Where ahead. do men store most of their body fat? Men? Men. I'm going to have to go with their middle. Yeah, the belly, right? Yeah. Where do most premenopausal women store their body fat? <laughs> in the middle? Nope. Butts and thighs, right? That, oh, butts and Sometimes thighs. Sometimes the back of the arms, right? Right. Now, during menopause, what happens to your fat? Well, you wouldn't know this because you're too young, but to <laughs> think about your mom. Where, does, uh, where do postmenopausal women store their body fat? In the middle. In the middle. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Now, what's the key hormonal difference between men and women? Well, estrogen. Estrogen and testosterone. <laughs> exactly. So why is it that women, without changing their nutrition, without changing the exercise, during menopause, their fat shifts from the lower body to the middle. Why is it? God, I don't know. That seems like a cruelty of one of God's cruelties. So tell, tell me why it it's is. It's because of the shift in hormones. So hormones determine body fat. So this is what we know intuitively, but it goes a lot deeper than that. You can measure actually 10 different areas around the body and correlate those to a person's hormonal profile. Here they are. You can measure the back of the arms, the triceps, for a person's level of testosterone, both men and women. You can measure the upper back for somebody's genetic tolerance for carbohydrates. In other words, how many carbohydrates can they tolerate before they start to put on body fat? And it's a continuum. At the one end of the continuum, you have a person who can eat whatever he or she likes and not put on an ounce of fat. At the other end of the continuum, mm, you have the person like yeah. <laughs> who can look at food and put on body fat. Oh yeah, but I'm one of those. That yeah. <laughs> does anybody, does somebody fall, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's the upper back. Now the chest. For women, it's the balance of estrogens. So it's not the actual the breast issue, it's the muscle. It's the muscle or the pectoral. Um, that correlates to the balance of estrogens. Estrogen is actually a group of three different hormones called estrone, estriol, and estradiol. It's the balance between those estrogens that determines your risk for breast cancer in women, prostate cancer in men, and other sex hormone-related cancers. Um, Moving on down, over the ribs, it's called the mid-axillary in anatomical terms, and that correlates to your level of thyroid. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on down, your love handles, they correlate your insulin. So if you're eating a chronically high carbohydrate diet, you're going to store a predominantly high amount of body fat, specifically in the love handles. Belly cor correlates to cortisol, the stress hormone. So now in women, somebody, cortisol can be really high and a lot of that yes. is, is, if I'm given to understand, it's stress induced, is that correct? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Cortisol okay. has a natural daily rhythm. You start in the morning, your cortisol is naturally high. A healthy person will have high cortisol in the morning. It drops throughout the day, and at night, it's, it goes down. At about 6 to 8 o'clock in the morning, it peaks again. That's what allows you to wake up. Cortisol is not an evil hormone. It's, it only does its damage when it's either too high or too low. Whenever we're under stress, cortisol is supposed to rise, and it's supposed to fall naturally. Exercise is a form of stress. When you're exercising, it should rise and fall naturally. The problem happens when it rises and stays high. That's where the problem happens, mm -hmm. when you lose that cortisol rhythm. So cortisol is not necessarily an evil hormone, it's just in the wrong quantities, um, it can affect many other hormones. So the belly, the fat on the belly, correlates to cortisol. Now, when I say stress, I don't just mean mental emotional stress. It's not just finances, deadlines, relationships. It's, it's stress is that for sure, but it's also poor nutrition. It's also too much exercise, not enough exercise, pollution, radiation, etc. Moving on down, the quadriceps and hamstrings, the front and back of the thighs, correlate to estrogen. 
the front of the thighs correlate to something called endogenous estrogen, meaning your body's natural production of estrogen. Back of the thighs, exogenous estrogen, or estrogens you get from the environment, like birth control, like hormone replacement, like plastic bottles, etc., etc. Knees and calves correlate to growth hormone. And here's an interesting tip. The knees will get two or three millimeters fatter two or three days after drinking alcohol. Wow. Very, very interesting. So for any of the, of the viewers who have teenagers at home, measure your teenagers' knees. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're home late. I'm measuring your knees. That's right. Okay. Um, so I just want to kind of move on because this is all in line with my questions. Yes. So, um, uh, for example, you mentioned that there's different types of hormones in the body. Insulin is one, cortisol is another, thyroid is the third. Yeah. When they there's are many more. And there's more. Yes. And, and I guess when they're out of whack, they, we tend to see more body on, fat on us and or have a tendency to have more difficulty losing weight. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I would like to know what you can do as a fitness guru to specifically target those areas and issues and help women who are having trouble losing weight lose that weight that yes. they, they want the body back you know i mean i think what happens is we're when we're younger in our 20s like we have you know less hormones at place so we have a more svelte figure mm -hmm. and then we get pregnant and right. we start you know that changes our hormones yes. breastfeeding changes the hormones yes then you know after 35 your hormones change mm -hmm. and then again when you hit the menopause years they change again so i think this is a very relevant point that you know covering the spectrum of my viewers who are watching yes. today want to know how can they get that fat off them very good question here is one very very important lesson your body fat is much more determined by hormones than it is by calories all right so hormonal balance will lead to low body fat naturally why because body fat in and of itself is an endocrine organ. Body fat releases hormones. It's not just inert, it's not just there, it's ugly, etc. It actually releases hormones, primarily estrogen. So if you have too much body fat, first and foremost, um, you're going to have an, some estrogen imbalance. But the first, first step to balancing your hormones, and before I, I, I do this, I should preface this by saying I am a fitness professional, I am an entrepreneur, no. I am not an endocrinologist or okay. a gynecologist or a doctor. But the so first step would be to get, the first get them step, balanced. Yes. The so single, see the doctor first. Okay. See the doctor then comes first. see Igor. Yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, the first step is to balance your hormones. How do we do that? There is certain hierarchy of hormones, ones that you have most control over to ones that you have the least control over. The single most controllable hormone by, in the body is insulin. Yes. The only thing that controls insulin is what you put in your mouth. Right. So let's get into that because, you know, I'm a diabetic. So yes. insulin is a part of my life. Yeah. I, I personally can relate to everything you're saying. Yeah. Uh, maybe like some of my viewers, I tend not to have any much fat on my body and right. build like a ton of muscle like a man, except for the middle mm -hmm. where, you know, it's like impossible to get a flat stomach. Yeah. Um, so controlling what we eat. Let's talk a little bit about that. Low carbs, high carbs, any kind of carbs. Yeah. Uh, should we be eating them? If so, in what proportion, in what quantity, or mm -hmm. should we not be eating them at all? There's yeah. a lot of diets today, uh, like Dr. Poon and Dr. Green, who yep. stress no carbs of any kind, including fruit, and strictly the protein-vegetable balance. What yes. do you feel about that? <laughs> I think that's a very, very good question, and the unfortunate answer is that it depends. <laughs> it depends. So it, eliminating carbs from the diet uh, may not be the answer or is it that we need to eliminate high carbs and replace them with low carbs like what are they what should we what should we be eating so remember how earlier I mentioned that there's a continuum of carbohydrate sensitivity in other words how many carbohydrates can you eat before you start to put on body fat mm -hmm. remember that continuum it's yes, one, the one the end. Of my neck. exactly yeah at, so at the one end, <laughs> okay, yeah. so at, at the one end you have the person who can eat whatever he or she likes and not put on body fat at the other hand we have a diabetic who can look at you know a, a bowl of pasta and put on body fat but where along that continuum do you fall? So here is the way I like to approach things. Um, for the first two weeks, we uh, only eat meat, fish, um, seafood, and whatever veggies you like, except for potatoes. All right, okay. nuts, seeds, and everything. So no carrots eliminated, no tomatoes eliminated, no, no beets. So because no. that they do that on other diets, yes. they, take, they really restrict that. Yes, out. 
in an extreme cases that might be called for, but uh, if most cases are not that extreme. So that's where we start. Now, two weeks later, we measure your body fat again. If it dropped, that means we can tolerate that level of sugar, so we can add in one more thing. We add in blueberry, the, the berry family, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, etc. We measure your body fat again, two weeks later. If it dropped, you can tolerate that level of sugar. We add in something else, like apples, nectarines, tangerines, things like that. Mm, we not measure a piece body of cake fat. Though, right? Not yet. Exactly. It might <laughs> it come. Later. Keep in mind, it's okay. not like it's gone forever. Once, <laughs> one in every 30 meals, you can have whatever you like. If you think about it, 30 meals is anywhere between five and seven days. Right. So if you really like watch yourself well throughout the week yeah. and watch what you're putting in your mouth and then, you know, decide to go out with friends or family to like some kind of buffet yeah. and pig out mm. once in a week or once yeah. a, in a twice a week, seven days off it, that you, you wouldn't gain that much is well, what you're saying? Well, that really depends. If oh, you've been okay. seriously, um, seriously changing the way you're eating and then you go out on a, a single meal um, and you do whatever you like, in fact, you make a point of stuffing yourself, you're going to have a very, very hard time losing body fat because that one meal can set you back three or four days. Wow. So it's like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. That leads to a lot of frustration, as you can imagine. So do you recommend to like eat at home because then you can control what you're putting in the food or there's yeah. less sodium, less, less sugar? You, you know, but eat. it does make for a restricted lifestyle, though. No, uh, yes, not... not not 100%. Now, I'm not saying you should eat at home. You should, you should certainly have a social life and an active one at that. Um, if you do eat out, there are Igor's rules for cheat meals. Okay. okay? Um, here are Igor's rules. Okay. The first thing you do is you eat your protein and veggies. Yeah, because okay. it'll fill you up. A, it fills you up, but B, there is a more important effect. It slows down how fast your blood sugar rises from the, so to speak, bad meal. So mm -hmm. that's one, one good effect of that. Mm -hmm. Part two is you have 10 grams of fish oil along with that meal. Why? Why do you think? I think because it will reduce your insulin spiking. Um, if you fill up on protein, you can eat tons and tons of protein and go miles without getting full, but you, you, yeah. you can enjoy your food and mm -hmm. your vegetables. And then when, when you, you know, it won't screw up your diet for the rest of the week. That's exactly. what I think. And then Very you won't good. even want those carbs. You won't even go for the rice and the noodles and the other stuff because you'll be so full with the good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Here's, something, here's an interesting lesson. The body does not crave calories. It craves nutrients. So why do we get women? Why do we get? Why do they get uh, cravings for chocolate around their menstrual, uh, around their menses? Yeah, why? Or salt and vinegar chips? That's salt the other. and vinegar chips. Yeah. Why is that? It's the magnesium in chocolate. Oh, is that what we love? Chocolate is rich in magnesium. Now, magnesium helps you, uh, helps, is a muscle relaxer. It's a natural muscle relaxer. So when you're getting cramps, magnesium helps. And women intuitively know that chocolate helps. It does. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I can't I think resist chocolate a piece helps of chocolate. everything, right? <laughs> it does. When I'm having a bad day, it's either chocolate or yeah. shopping. Or chocolate no. will fix everything. Yes. So I just want to sort of move on a little because I'm trying to cover everything we sure. can in this interview. And um, one of the things like supplements, so for example, mm -hmm. we know that we should be taking supplements. Magnesium as a supplement might help us crave our, our sugar cravings or yep. chromium might help us yes. crave our sugar, sugar cravings. But now we hear a lot from Dr. Oz about, yes. about green tree, no, green, green tea. Green coffee bean, bean extract. Green coffee bean, right. Green coffee bean extract and raspberry ketones. Yes. And, you know, this is a, the, the rage in Hollywood. They claim that this particular magic pill will, in fact, keep you thin. Yeah. Do you agree with it? Do you think some people should be taking it? Uh, when is it? Yep. When is it good? When is it harmful? Because, mm -hmm. for example, if you're already on other medications, including medications to control hormones like thyroid and insulin, it could be a detriment to add this. So I think yeah. I'd like you, you know, this is a serious matter. Please comment on it because I think the viewers yeah. need to know before they rush out and spend money on yeah. green coffee bean and raspberry keto. You're absolutely right. And these things are flying right off the shelves. And I think Dr. Oz is doing a fantastic job in the natural health field. Um, but I think also that uh, there isn't enough research behind raspberry ketones and green coffee bean extract to uh, necessarily justify their use. And I talked to, uh, specifically about raspberry ketones in, in one of my newsletters, which I, which I offer for free. Um, but uh, when I actually did the research on raspberry ketones, um, there is no research in humans. It's in mice. Oh, um, and, two, mm -hmm. and two, um, all the research is promising. I'll put it that way. Um, here's what the research showed. When mice were fed high calorie diets, those given raspberry ketones did not put on body fat. They didn't lose body fat, but they didn't put on body fat. But again, those are mice, it's not humans. 
Two, we don't know the long-term effects of raspberry ketones or coffee, green coffee bean extract. Um, on the other side of the coin, green coffee bean extract, um, there is one research study, um, and it's only one, but it is, it is promising. People actually lost, I believe, 2% body fat over a, either a six or an eight week span. It's promising, um, but again, it's just one study. In science, you always want to replicate things. Why is it that vitamin C and vitamin D right now aren't getting as much press as raspberry ketones or green coffee bean extracts? Because they're not as fashionable right now. They're not now. as fashionable, but there are hundreds, thousands of studies establishing their usefulness. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's tried, tested, and true, but it's not trendy because it's... it's so what you're saying news. is don't throw away your insulin medication yeah. or your type 2 diabetes pills whatever no in replacing this or even your thyroid pills which you know a lot of yeah. people do get of information overload or tend to want to replace things uh you know yeah absolutely before uh cutting anything out of your medications definitely speak to your doctor first okay so we're running out of time got two quick questions sure. for you you're gonna have to do this a little bit quick yes okay so you're at a gym you're working out mm -hmm. you're not getting the results particularly if you have this hormone body fat connection problem. Mm -hmm. What can working out with you or members of your staff mm -hmm. um, at Fitness Solutions Plus, and I understand you have numerous staff, you have uh, various locations throughout the city. Correct. Um, what, what can you do to like actually make a, a, what, a difference in the workout? Like, mm. What would you suggest? To make a difference in the workout, the biggest the biggest problem most personal trainers make is they don't individualize their routine. You remember how I told you that different hormonal profiles, um, different size correlate to different hormonal profiles. Well, different hormonal profiles necessitate different approaches. You know, the worst thing you can do for belly fat is long duration cardio. The worst thing you can do for belly fat is long duration cardio. So if you're so running, running on the to treadmill, classes every day and yeah. or running on the treadmill and or the stepper can actually yeah, that's be the worst thing you can do for belly fat. Oh, now, really? if it's your mm, love dude, handles, that's what they told me to do. <laughs> okay, yeah. But if it's yeah. your love handles, that might not be so bad. Okay? Oh, can I? So, what about like going to Zumba classes and other type of classes? Can that be a tar a good way to target this kind of love handle thing? As with anything, the answer is it depends. It okay. depends on your specific profile. In other words, is love handles the highest area or is belly fat the highest area? In addition to that, do you have symptoms of insulin resistance, even if you're not a diabetic? Do you have symptoms of adrenal fatigue, meaning um, you wake up after eight hours of sleep and you're still feeling tired, or you're reaching for a coffee or a chocolate bar around 2 or 4 in the afternoon, or when you're going from sitting to standing, maybe you get a little bit lightheaded. Those are all symptoms of adrenal fatigue. If that's the case, Zumba is going to be bad for you. Long distance uh, cardio or long duration cardio is going to, be, going to be bad for you, but things like Tai Chi, yoga, gentle activities are going to be good for you. On and weightlifting? And weightlifting, absolutely. Okay, because then you build the, the, the muscle, which yeah. will help burn the fat. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I should differentiate. In weightlifting, there are many different styles of weightlifting. Mm -hmm. There is a style of weightlifting where you lift heavier uh, weights for fewer repetitions, five or less, but you rest a long time between sets. That is going to be good for that profile. At the other, on the other hand, um, there is circuit training where you're using moderate weights, moderate sets, short rest between um, intervals. That's going to be bad for you if you have uh, belly fat, but good for you if you have love handle fat. Wow. Okay, so uh, we have to wrap up, but I wanted to mention mm -hmm. two things. Okay, first of all, you said you have a blog with this fabulous information, yes. more of what you're sharing with us today. Yep. Can you tell me how to get on that blog? Yep. Um, it's actually a free newsletter that I have. It comes out every Monday. No sales pitches, just legitimately good information like this. Um, to go to find it, just go to torontofitnessonline.com slash blog. And if you look at the top right-hand corner, there is a sign-up form. If you let me know that you would like to receive the newsletter, I'll, I'll send it off to you. Okay, and your website is Toronto? torontofitnessonline.com. And now let us not forget your giveaway, which is an excellent yes. one. So ladies, if you'd like to work out with an mm -hmm. obviously an educated man who uh, knows a little bit about the hormone fat connection and get a different perspective on your workouts, you can qualify to win uh, a workout with Igor at his gym, Igor's gym is in the Markham area, located at Markham Woodbine Road. Woodbine and Denison. Oh, sorry, Woodbine and Denison. Woodbine and Denison. The value is $90. Now, to claim it, you need to send Igor a, an email. So that is Igor at TorontoFitnessOnline.com. Again, Igor at TorontoFitnessOnline.com, and you could qualify to win it. A, a training session for a $90 a plus HST to get you started on your way. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess we're out of time. I wanted to ask you one thing in parting, and Please. that is why did you choose to get involved in this type of field, fitness? Mm, did you have question. a fat issue as a child? No fat no, issue. No? Um, it's just that, uh, it's a funny story. I learned how to walk on a ping pong table. Oh, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, then when, my, when I was six years old, my dad installed a chin-up bar in my house, oh. and he told me, you do, a, you do one set of chin-ups every day for the rest of your life. And wow. until about age 10, I listened to him, at which point I, I moved to Canada and we lost our chin-up bar. Uh. Um, so by age 10, I was doing 19 chin-ups, which uh, for the military, I believe you only need like 18. But I was doing oh. that at age 10. Wow, you were well-trained. I was well-trained, exactly. Okay. Russian parents, you know? Exactly. So <laughs> you really know fitness. And again, it's www.fitness... Um, TorontoFitnessOnline.com. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ladies, for being with us today. I want to tell you that this is a show for you to get personal and professional fulfillment and the muster to tackle anything in your life. We cover all the issues here. So please join us next time on I'm Every Woman TV. And until then, continue to be fabulous and have yourself a great Valentine's Day.